Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review for the Witeski Digital Temperature Controller. You'll receive the temperature controller, thermometer, and an instruction manual. This is the main controller. It measures 5 inches long, 2.5 inches wide, and 1 and a quarter inch thick. On the front, there's an LCD with a 2 inch diagonal, power button, settings button, and up and down adjustment keys. On the back, there's a hanger at the top of the unit. To the left hand side is the 6 foot power cable with 3 prong ground plug. And on the right are the controlled sockets. The socket on the right is for your heating device, and the one on the left is for your cooling device. They are marked, though the print here is a bit hard to see. To the left of the power cable is an input port for the thermometer, which sits at the end of a 6 foot cable. There's even a small suction cup on the cable to help you keep the wire in place once you've determined the proper location for it. When you first plug in the device, it may be showing Celsius units. To change to Fahrenheit, press the settings key. The top number is the current temperature at the thermometer. The second is the max temperature, and the third is the minimum temperature. Since the current temp is less than the minimum temperature, you'll see this fire icon up top, which indicates that the outlet for the heating device is powered on. This exclamation point in a circle is an audible alarm, which sounds when there is a short or open circuit detected. You'll hear this sound if the thermometer gets disconnected. To stop the alarm, plug the thermometer in, or just press any key on the unit. If you want to disable this alarm, press and hold the down key on the unit until the icon disappears. To change the min and max temp settings, press and hold the settings key until the decimal place for the max temperature starts blinking. You can adjust the target max temp by tenths of a degree. Press the settings key to change to the singles digit. Press again to change to the tens, and once more to change to the hundreds. Note that the max setting is 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And once you go above 100, you can't adjust down from the hundreds position for some reason. Instead, switch back to the singles or tens position to change the temperature down again. To change the min temp, press and hold the settings key again. Then you can adjust the min temp in the same way you did the max temp. Note that the lowest temperature you can set here is negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's an example setup, where I have the fan plugged into the cooling outlet and the space heater plugged into the heating outlet. Since the current temperature is 65 degrees and between the min and max settings, neither of the devices are powered on. However, if I change the min temperature to 68 so that the current temperature is lower, the space heater switches on to heat up the room. Note that the lower limit only serves to trigger the on event for the heater, and it will continue to run the heating device until it comes within 3.5 degrees of the max temperature, which in this case is 67.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So now the heater is off. Okay, now I've set the unit's max temp to 67 degrees, and the thermometer is reading 68 degrees. So you'll see here that the fan switches on to start the cooling process. Again, the off trigger for the fan is when it comes within 3.5 degrees of the min temp. So even though the temperature has dropped below the max temp, the fan is still running and will do so until the thermometer reads 63.5 degrees. This temperature controller has smart capabilities too, and can be controlled via the Smart Life app on a mobile device. There's a QR code in the manual to find where to download it from the Google Play Store or Apple App Store. Once in the app, tap the blue plus in the upper right hand corner and select socket Wi-Fi. Then enter your network's name and password. You'll need to activate Wi-Fi pairing on the unit by pressing and holding the power button until you see the Wi-Fi icon flash in the upper left corner. When the unit has been added to the app, the icon will be steady. After adding it to the app, there was a firmware update which I decided to install. This helps fix issues and bugs with the unit. 
you can toggle on automatic updates as well. Just note that during updating, the unit will stop operating briefly. This is the temperature controller's interface in the app. The current temperature is on the left, and these are the max and min temps. You can change the max and min by tapping on them, then adjusting the setting here. And as you can see on the LCD, the setting has been changed to 73 degrees as well. Interestingly, when I set the min temp to 63 degrees, the LCD showed the setting is 62.9 degrees. I'm not really sure why there's a tenth of a degree discrepancy, but I'm guessing it's some sort of rounding error when converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And while it's technically a bug, the small difference in temperature generally won't matter much in a real world application. The app can also show you historical graphs of the device's usage history. And you can change other settings like add a cooling delay, high and low temperature alarms, set the units, and calibrate the thermometer by adding offsets if it seems inaccurate. Another common application for this device is for gardeners who start seeds indoors and need to control the soil temperature to allow for optimal germination conditions. With both heating and cooling options, that makes this device suitable for all seasons, whether you need a bit of extra heat in colder months or need to cool things down from excessive heat in warmer ones. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.